certainly does. Uh, our society automatically says that if two males or two females live together over the age of 30, you're automatically labeled a homosexual, even if it isn't true. And it's certainly not true with, with many, many cases. But it's not conducive to homosexual relationships because uh, society says, uh, uh, you know, you can't do that. And then they turn around and say, well, it's all wrong because they jump from bed to bed. And yet they turn around, it's almost hypocritical in their stand of you shouldn't settle down and be in a relationship. And yet if you don't, uh, you're, you're all wrong. And all single people are. Yes, yeah, single people in automatically a way, in a way. Are, are, are victimized. One reason for the thing we talked about marriages earlier are people getting together. I feel like single people, not just homosexuals, but single people, period, in this country are discriminated against, even, say, in paying your income tax. Why shouldn't I be able to, to uh, list my lover as my other half? And us, we get a tax break, too. We need it. Why shouldn't we have it? I mean, just to be on the, the economical point of view on the homosexual. Don't you think that would more or less uh, make for better people? The, the lady was talking about uh, uh, her son being uh, a attacked more or less. Yes. Don't you think that would stop some of this? Whereas if homosexuals could have uh, meaningful relationships in the open, they would be more content to stay with one person and not go out from you know, bed to bed, as you say, or seek people who That's are not absolutely like right. them. Usually the people who end up, like this lady said, the homosexual who attacked her son, are usually those individuals who are unstable and it's because they've never learned that there are people around just like them and that they could settle into a relationship and therefore this type of person who would uh, molest or picked up a young boy would be immature he would think of himself as being a young boy too usually this is the case once a psychiatrist starts dealing with a person like this um, but I agree that yes there should be stable relations in America. She's asking some very uh, kind of, uh, her questions have insight, don't they? Yes, uh, they the do. Sensitivity. Of, and I, I mention that because I see, you know, she's got her wedding ring on and she's, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> Mrs. Straight from middle America. <laughs> right. Uh, um, do you understand why I made that point? You know, you don't seem to, it doesn't, you're not, uh, you don't think those questions are risky. No. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. It's I think people are very narrow-minded. I mean, I'm not for homosexuals, but, you know, live and let live. If that's, it seems to be natural to them from what I have heard, and it's natural to me to live with a man. And why should I condemn them? Because they feel they should live with, you know, woman to woman and man to man. Well, thank you. you. I, I think that is the attitude of a lot of people in society, and uh, we hope the day will come when it will be the real majority attitude I because what we do in our bedroom I should never have to explain to anybody what I do neither should you mm -hmm. uh, we hope the day will come when a person like me won't have to appear on a television program and discuss homosexuality but that will come to the age where people will say well yes those two guys live together but so what my husband and I live together. That's not important. I think what is more important is uh, a stable person, really. Yes, I do too, most definitely. Mm -hmm. And when you have all these pressures on you, it's like the black community. The black community has the highest rate of suicides in the nation. Why? Here again, it's this, this uh, area of people always, you're looked at, you're, you're the nigger. And, and with the homosexual, you're the queer. But you can imagine going through life as the freak. It bothers you. Yes, I mean Only we're, we're growing up ourselves now so that we know we're not freaks. And once you settle that in your own mind and you know where you're going and what you are, then it makes all the difference in the world. Thank you. While I'm back here, ma'am, you'll stand. Yes, as I asked before, that I do know both men and women who have been married, had families, and then have turned homosexual. Why? I think that most of these people were probably homosexual before they ever married. There is a period we homosexuals call our coming out, when we come to terms with ourself. I was married because society told me that was the thing to do. Even though in the back of my mind I knew, and yet I suppressed that feeling that I was different. And yet society says, that's a man. You marry, you have children, you settle down. And uh, this is what happens. And then there, there comes a crisis in the life of the homosexual. Where one day, even if he's married, he says, I can't go on like this. I feel like there's a part of me that, that's suffering. What am I going to do? Now, all at once he's in a situation, society always tells you, if you're homosexual, get married and that'll cure it. That's a myth. It doesn't cure it. And of course, what happens is that this 
if it's a young man, this poor young lady that he's married who didn't know anything about it, suffers as a result of it because she has the children nine times out of ten because the courts, if she uses the word homosexual in court, immediately no visiting rights for him or anything else. That's going to be the end of it. But maybe deep in her heart, she still loves that man. He's still the man that she married, but uh, they can't cross this gap and he feels like now he has to get out, that he has to find himself with his own, with other homosexuals. And I think that's the reason that it happens sometimes. Do you have children? Yes, I do. I have two sons. Uh, how do they feel toward you now? My sons are very young, and uh, they really don't know about this. I wonder how much time you spend in your church sermonizing on your problem, or if you want to call it a problem, on yeah. your homosexuality. All right, that's a great question. Great I probably spend um, all a good 40% of my time preaching sermons that are relevant to the homosexual community. Okay. Yes, you'll stand, please. Running out of time. Why, how do you get around the scripture in the Bible that says that God created man in his own image and it was not good for man to be alone and create a woman? Now, I can't see how you could be Christian and still not go along with this. Uh, I do go along with that. I don't discount that in any way, shape, or form. I believe that I am created in the image of God. Male and female created he them. He said first before he ever even talked about uh, creating a woman to be a helpmate to man. But it doesn't still, this process of creation, exclude the homosexual. We don't feel like it. He told them to multiply. Well, that's true, but then uh, have we started sinning now by not multiplying, by talking about contraceptives and talking well, about... I still think the marriage is for that purpose. Just having children. That's, that's the main purpose. God in the very beginning well, the main purpose was that he, should not, purpose. that he should not be alone, that he should love another individual. I agree with you there. Hi, are you there? Phil? Yeah, hang on a second. Right. You want to straighten me out on something. Okay. Yes, uh, you made a remark Briefly. as we went off the, uh, the air that we're a homosexual church. I just wanted to say we're a Christian church. We're a homosexual church, if you mean in the connotation that a church that is predominantly black is a Negro congregation. Eighty percent of our congregation are homosexuals, twenty percent are heterosexuals. Yes, sir. Go. Phil? Yes. There's a movie on uh, that's been out called The Boys in the Band right. representing homosexuals. Does this represent or have the representation of all the homosexuals in society? No, it doesn't. Uh, I went to see the movie and the play, Boys in the Band. There are areas of the, uh, the play that uh, typify some homosexuals, such as Emery, the young man who was very flighty, and uh, the straight friend who described him as being a butterfly in heat. But uh, it, the, the sad ending where the young man, it, it made the homosexual look like they were all ready to rush out and blow their brains out or go down to, I believe it was St. Catherine's, the Midnight Mass, and ask forgiveness for their sins again. And uh, the majority of homosexuals just aren't that way anymore. That movie would have been great in the 40s, but not in the 70s. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. You bet. Hi, Reverend Perry on the line. Hello. Hello there. Um, I'd like to ask, uh, when he married two homosexuals, what last name do they assume? They're just like the Lucy Stoners of the turn of the century. When uh, it was quite interesting, homosexuals, or pardon me, heterosexuals, women, during the women's libera liberation movement, uh, in, back in 1915, that e era, there were women who felt so strongly that women should be permitted to vote that they went into this thing of refusing to accept their husband's last names. Many movie stars still do this today. And uh, they were called the Lucy Stoners because Lucy Stone married a, a gentleman but then refused to accept his last name. She was still known as uh, Lucy Stone. We're talking with uh, Reverend Troy Perry who founded the uh, Metropolitan Community Church of Los Angeles, a homosexual congregation, back in just a moment. Joining us in what we hope was, in your judgment, a responsible discussion of a very sensitive issue. Thank you for joining us on this program. Thank you.